What's going on there, everyone? Uh, interesting report from the Hill this morning. Is this the turning point in 2020 dim presidential primary? Yeah, and what they're talking about, of course, is Joe Biden. We all have seen Joe Biden make a, a, a lustrous, gaff-prone career. But if you've been paying attention here recently, it's every week this guy comes out and says just something that's small but wrong all the time. So, not looking good for old Joe. But let's get into the story a little bit. Former Vice President Joe Biden's presidential campaign is showing multiple cracks, headlined by a new poll released Monday as he continues to maintain poll position in the primary field. As Amy Parnes writes, since he launched his campaigns four months ago, Biden's chief selling point to voters has been a simple one, that he's far and away the most electable candidate in a head-to-head -head matchup against President Trump, with his allies pointing to polls showing him performing well in key states such as Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. However, Democrats say he has to offer more. <clears throat> That's kind of a Democrat problem right now. More, more, more. Give them, offer more. Give them, tell them free things. This, that, and the other. We'll pay for this. We'll pay for that. When it's all nonsensical, because uh, the government doesn't pay for anything. We pay for everything. So when they say, just remember, people on the Democratic side, when they say the government will give you free health care, it's not free, you're paying for it, because you're going to see a spike in taxes, this, that, and the other. Please remember this stuff. It seems that people get carried away with the fairy tale concept of the government doing nice things and giving away stuff. Nothing is free. Nothing is free. Everyone's heard that because it's true. Nothing is free. Even if your friend gives you something, they're going to expect something in return sooner or later. That's just, it's kind of human nature. It's kind of weird. I hope the Biden folks are smart enough to realize that they can't run solely on electability arguments because I'm pretty confident that, that won't work out in the long run, said Jim Manley, a former top aide to former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, Democrat from Nevada, and former Senator Ted Kennedy. Ugh. While the Biden campaign argues that the team is pressing other issues, the electability point remains the main one. Last week, former second lady Jill Biden said the main reason the former vice president should be considered is his electability. And that was rather sad to have your wife come out on TV and say, yeah, it's not looking all that good, but I mean, what other choice do you got? Come on. That, optically, that was terrible. I mean... That actually sat into me. I was like, wow, that, that's what he got? He, he's got to bring his old lady out. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty, pretty sad. Giving Biden's opponents and detractors ammunition on Monday was a new poll released by Monmouth University showing the former vice president in a near three-way tie nationally with Senator Elizabeth Warren and Senator Bernie Sanders. Yikes. That's not good for America right there. I don't, I don't care who you are. That is not a good combination. I've been saying for a while that I think what's going to happen is it's going to be Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren for vice president and president. And that would, that would be horrific for the United States. Compared with uh, Monmouth's previous poll released in June, Biden dropped 13 points, falling from 32% to 19%. Warren and Sanders each nab 20%. Now, if I click over here, it's talking about that poll. But this is only one poll, people. It's just one poll. you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Unless you have an amalgam of different polls, you're not going to get but so accurate, you know. But let's see if we can... Uh, yeah, right here. There are signs that uh, moderate and conservative Democrats are beginning to gravitate towards Sanders and Warren, which is which is crazy because it says moderate and conservative Democrats, but um, 
there's nothing about these two people, moderate or, or even, I mean, they're, with Bernie, you get a little bit of a, of a conservative slant when it comes to certain positions, by far from all. But he does believe in um, strong border security and stuff like that. He, he, he is kind of nationalistic in ways. But that's scary, too, because he's a socialist. And we all know that national socialist, mm, not that good of a thing. But, yeah, Sanders saw his support among those voters jump from 10% to 20% over the uh, past two months, while backing for Warren rose from 16% or 6% to 16%. Since June, both Sanders and Warren have gained support overall, according to the Monmouth poll. Sanders gained six points in the latest survey, while Warren picked up five points. At the same time, Warren has been, or Warren has seen a noticeable uptick in favorability, climbing from 60% in May to 65% in August. Biden, on the other hand, saw his favorability drop from 74% to 66% during the same period. Now. Um, Elizabeth Warren has been making some waves. She had an event over the weekend that drew in a crowd of 15,000. That's, that's impressive. That is frighteningly impressive. <clears throat> Neither one of these people would be good. I mean, they're both, they both have pie in the sky policy changes they want to make that just won't work. She said, uh, Warren herself says, you know, why are people running for president if you don't have bold ideas? Because bold, uh, bold's good if it's feasible. But what these progressive Democrats are doing is it's not feasible. Financially, it's not feasible. And I say this all the time. Financially, America can't handle these types of things that the Democrats are putting forth. You know, it's just... They're, a nation of 30 or 330 plus 331 plus million people yeah not going to be able to afford all this stuff people can't have free stuff they always want to point to the scandinavian models of look at them they're doing so all these social programs even though they're not a socialist uh, economy or anything like that but they do social programs but they also have like 60 million people tops in some of these places they can afford to handle that when you multiply that to where it is in the united states with 331 plus million people yeah it makes things a lot harder to swing yeah, i don't think people ever think about the actual numbers they don't crunch the numbers on these things i i did it a long time ago in a video i crunched the numbers on how much just uh the medicare for all would cost and it was it was staggering i can't remember the numbers off the top of my head but it was staggering but back to the original story additionally biden kept up his string of gaffes late last week when he mistakenly praised vermont when asked about his impressions of uh, king uh, new hampshire he also momentarily forgot which building he was speaking at while on Dartmouth College's campus last week. He made light of the latter misstep during a campaign appearance on Friday in a first-in-the-nation primary state. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to be clear. I'm not going nuts, Biden said of his visit to Dartmouth last week. I'm not sure whether it was a medical school or where the hell I spoke, but it was on the campus. I don't think he's going nuts, but I think he does have some cognitive issues. He's obviously no good for president. I mean, Trump may be up there in age and everything, but he's sharp. He's fast. He's witty. I mean, he, he's got it together. Biden doesn't have it together at all. Just try to watch him speak for any period of time, and, and it's painful to watch. You could tell the guy, he barely, he barely has a grasp of anything anymore i mean it's it's sad he shouldn't be propped up this guy needs to go he he needs to retire period i mean it's not looking good for him the new york times warren is quietly telling democratic insiders that she is a team player who is seeking to lead the party not stage a hostile takeover of it 
<clears throat> Axios. Trump's net approval ranking uh, rating sinks in every battleground state. While all eyes remain on the presidential contest, Republicans are increasingly looking at Senate races. They view their majority in the upper chamber as a firewall for the party as they remain concerned that Trump could lose his re-election bid next year. And one thing about Trump and that we've learned from 2016 is don't ever trust the polls when it comes to Trump. First off, a lot of these polling places are, are taking, they're taking part in big cities. So your polling numbers are going to be skewed by that to a more Democrat like slant. Big cities are generally Democratic strongholds. Another thing is, is uh, the polls just, when it comes to Trump, they have a hard time being accurate. They really do. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's the pollsters or, or what, or the line of questioning. I'm not sure, but they just don't seem to get it, uh, get it right that much. As Jordan uh, Cardi and Max Greenwood report, Republicans see winning back the House majority next November as a steep climb, and a hypothetical head-to-head -head matchups show Trump trailing various Democratic rivals. While Republicans are still optimistic about Trump's chances and believe it's early in the presidential contest, they see holding the Senate as an absolute necessity given how races for the White House and House are shaping up. And are playing their cards accordingly which is smart you know it's always good to be prepared especially when we see the left wing of our political system going crazy i mean going absolutely crazy these people they're hypocritical i mean they i, I don't even get me started don't get me started on the left right now on the democratic side representative joe kennedy the latest uh, scion of the Kennedy political tree announced Monday that he is looking at a possible primary challenge against incumbent Senator Ed Markey and took concrete steps toward a potential bid. A run by fourth term congressman would be a generational battle against Markey, who won his Senate seat in 2013 after serving 37 years in the House and a formidable matchup. While Kennedy is expected to be well-funded if he runs, Markey has $4 million in the bank and has already earned the support of most of the Massachusetts congressional delegation, including Warren, who cut an ad on behalf of Markey. <clears throat> a primary bid for Kennedy would also continue a family tradition as former President John F. Kennedy and former Senator Robert Kennedy, the Massachusetts congressman's grandfather, both challenged and defeated incumbent senators to win their seats. Politico. You are helping him, vulnerable Democrats grilled on impeachment. Yeah, I think um, if you look at the combination of polls, you'll see that Americans are not all down with impeachment as a whole. You have the, the radical left side that are all, get rid of them, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, everyone else is like, ah, we don't need to worry about all that. So that would, I mean... It's it's really a bad look for the Demo certain Democrats that keep pushing this impeachment push, which is, they, there's nothing to impeach him on. The guy has been cleared of everything they've possibly thrown at him, so you kind of got nothing. It's making, making y'all look weak. Y'all are just sore losers. When it comes down to it, the, the Democrats are kind of just sore losers. It's been how long? since 2016 and they still can't get over it they just can't do it they can't do it after eight years of them winning when they lose that power they're just power hungry that's all it is they want the power they don't have policy they just want the power in the house uh, representative sean duffy announced on monday that he will be resigning from his seat in congress in late September as he readies to care for his family. He and his wife, Rachel Campos Duffy, are, are Campos Duffy, are preparing for the arrival of their ninth child. Good gravy. In a statement, Duffy said that the baby will need even more love, time, and attention due to complications, including heart conditions. Thoughts for you? Thoughts to you. That's, that's awful to hear. The announcement by Duffy47 will trigger a special election to fill the remainder of his term. 
Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers will set an election date. Washington Post, a GOP uh, appointee resigns from Federal Election Commission leaving without a quorum. Uh, Reuters, U.S. officials fear ransomware attack in the 2020 election. Yeah, we're, we're going to have that. We're going to have that. I'm not going to keep on going into all the, this little stuff. But um, the main point of the story is the left seems to finally be understanding that Joe Biden is a terrible pick. Absolutely horrible. And, and really, Joe Biden, them propping him up so much has really taken away from people that might actually, um, that, that could actually do some damage to the Republican Party. I don't know what it is about the appeal of socialistic ideas and, and people like Bernie Sanders and whatnot, but young people are ate up with thinking that things are free and that they can actually get free stuff. That's, that's what it boils down to, in my opinion. I've talked to many, 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 many Generation Zers and Millennials, and, and they find that appealing. And they just don't seem to understand or listen when I try to explain to them that nothing is free. Nothing is free. You pay for every single thing. One way or another, the government's going to get it from you while masking it as being free. But what are you going to do? Some people are just too hard-headed, too pig-headed to learn anything or to even do any real research on their own. We see this all the time, especially with the left. I mean, generally, your moderates and conservative Democrats, which there are some of those, you know, your classical liberals, they get it. They understand the threat of these people. And that's why a lot of them are saying, I just can't vote for a Democrat right now. And God bless them for it. Because, I mean, at least they understand that they're, of course, they're not going to vote for Trump. They'll probably either write in somebody or or we'll see what happens, you know. We don't know who's going to be on the ticket quietly. But, yeah, the left's, uh, the left's finally starting to show signs of turning on Joe Biden, which will still be surprising if they do, because the DNC has a habit of not caring what the electorate or who the electorate likes. They just care about who they want to prop up. We saw that in 2016 with Bernie Sanders being screwed over by the DNC and them pushing Hillary Clinton, someone who never could have won, especially against a powerhouse figure like Donald Trump. But no one liked Clinton, except for a few feminist and very un mentally unhinged people that don't know anything about anything people that just wanted a woman to be president. I have no problem with a woman being president, but just not that one. And not Elizabeth Warren. Not Elizabeth Warren. I haven't talked about Tulsi Gabbard in a while, and, and I, I still, she she made a really big gaffe, in my opinion, at that, I believe it was the second debate, where she said Trump and ISIS, or Trump and the Taliban, or ISIS, or Al-Qaeda, I think it was Al-Qaeda, were working together, or he was working with them, but um, that was one of the stupidest damn things I've ever heard in my life. But I'll forgive. Every Everyone makes a mistake. Everyone says something stupid here and there, and I'm willing to forgive that one thing. I wouldn't vote for her. She's just... Her, her domestic policies are garbage. Absolute garbage. She would be a great, like, foreign minister or something or ambassador to the United Nations. I think her her foreign policy would be great, but her domestic policy is just garbage. But um they should be propping people like her up, you know. She she has the power to bring the left and the right to a middle ground, I think personally. But um a lot of people are like her and Yang should team up. I think Yang would actually bring down Tulsi Gabbard. Because Yang completely loses me, completely lost me with uh, universal basic incomes garbage. Who's going to be, that, that's going to be taxpayers giving other non-taxpayers money 
just because those other non-taxpayers are lazy and don't want to do anything. You know, it's weird. It's just strange. It's strange what they're trying to, these Democratic politicians are trying to say, oh, these are our policies. They're great for you. No, they're not. No, they're not, people. They're absolutely garbage policies that are just going to bankrupt the nation. But I've been ranting for too long. I've kind of went away from the whole premise of the video and everything. So I'm going to leave it here. And um, I'd love to hear your comments on anything. Whether you think they're going to actually slowly start weeding out Joe Biden and propping up the other two, Sanders and Warren, or whether you think they're going to keep propping up Biden because they don't want Sanders or Warren either. So I think I think they're going to keep going with Biden, to be honest with you. I think they're going to keep going. Do you see the way that all these left-wing pundits sit here and, and, and just try to cover all of his mistakes up for him, you know? If it was a Republican making any of these types of gaffes, oh my goodness, but it's not, so. But yeah, as always, like, share, and subscribe. I will catch you on the flip side.